Back right, the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. I can't believe the blowback to talk about NXT 2.0 sometimes. The show was last night on national television, for crying out loud, and you know, it wasn't that bad. There were two kidnappings, <laughs> which usually usually we're limited to one kidnapping every week, but this week we got two. Yeah. Although, well, to be anybody's fair... anybody's got an attitude about this, I'll go back to doing the review, and Brian won't be here for it, and then you're really going to be sad, so... So Shut up and deal with it. We had uh, we had a recap from uh, Spring Break In when Braun Breaker won, and then Druids kidnapped him. So technically there weren't two new kidnappings. This was a kidnapping from last week. So he got carried off in a barbed wire stretcher, and he's got a bag on his head, and he's being tortured by Joe Gacy. And then uh, Joe Gacy shows up to do a, a promo later, and uh, I have no idea where, you know, Braun Breaker is. He's just missing. He's missing, and uh, and that one guy that was with... Uh, anyway. So we had uh, JC Jane and Gigi Dolan versus Roxanne Perez and Wendy Chu in a non-title match, and, uh, and the champions won. So I'm not quite sure why they couldn't have just done a championship match. But, uh, you know, Roxy is, you know, the best worker on this team. I wouldn't say by miles because Wendy Chu is, is pretty good as well. But uh, Mandy Rose uh, is on the outside. She literally gets inside the ring in front of the referee for a brawl. Uh, this is not a DQ. And then uh, Dolan rolls up Perez and pins her. And then they uh, beat down and bully Wendy Chu afterwards. So the wrestling was, the wrestling was fine. Finish was beyond, far beyond preposterous. Brawling inside the ring. Not a DQ. We had Tiffany Stratton and Grayson Waller going shopping. I like this duo. They're great. Grayson Waller and Tiffany Stratton are a great couple. And God knows we need couples because, you know, two of the uh, significant others just got fired. Creed Brothers are upset. Roderick Strong interfered last week. They have a rematch next week against the Viking Raiders. They vow to do it right. Strong then announces that he's got a new member of the Diamond Mine, and it is Damon Kemp, whose name is... He's, like, rattling off all of his uh, his accolades, and then he announces him as Damon Kemp, which is not his real name. This is the brother of Gable Steveson. So, you know, they could have used his actual name and promoted him as the brother of Olympian Gable Stevenson, but no, he's Damon Kemp, who's done some wrestling. So he's been that called may up be to the better main for roster. him in the long run, but we'll see. And we had the Joe Gacy interview. So uh, the Druids apparently are going to be unveiled as some people, but I don't know who. And uh, I'll tell you, who is it? One of them's going to be Braun Breaker. You know it. Well, I know that, but I think that the idea is that these two guys are supposed to be new characters on the show, but I could be wrong. Hmm. We had a a skit, the Ivy Nile Challenge, because we're all about strong young women on this show. And so she uh, goes to the Performance Center, and she's doing, like, all of this, you know, these exercises with these guys, and uh, one by one, they fall. And so she is the last person standing, does burpees and... Weighted pull-ups and all of this stuff, and she's the she's the toughest person in the performance center. Is the is the storyline? Then we add the tournament matches: Fallon Henley against Sloan Jacobs. It is impossible to say any of these names with a straight face. Fallon Henley won in about two minutes. And, uh, yes, uh, the virgin, Brooks Jensen, was, in fact, out there at ringside wearing a T-shirt that read, Virginity Rocks. Yes. Yes. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with with maintaining your virginity and until you're ready. I just, if I was in my professional place of employment, being pro wrestling of all things, I don't know if I'm walking around in a virginity rock shirt. Even AC Green didn't walk around in a virginity rock shirt. I don't think. Team Tebow? No, he never did that either. You're kind of 
Uh, to hell with it. We had a Santos Escobar skit with uh, Tony D'Angelo. AJ Galante, of course, got kidnapped last week. And literally, Santos Escobar, AJ Galante has never been seen again after he got kidnapped. And Santos Escobar, flat out on national television, suggests he'll never walk again. We smashed his legs beyond recognition. And so then uh, Tony D'Angelo, he tells uh, uh, Del Toro, Benicio mm-hmm. Del Toro, to go and start the car. But uh, Tony D'Angelo and his, his, uh, his buddies attack the bull, and they put him in the trunk. So now he will never walk again. Or worse. Elbow fire face to Mari Miller. They had about two minutes, and she beat her, and that was the match. Corjade is setting up her inner her match with uh, Natty later. Then we had Solo Sokoa coming down to the ring, and uh, God bless this guy, he does not have the charisma of the Usos. He's struggling his way through this interview. And uh, Grimes comes out. He's a North American champion. Hayes and Williams come out. And essentially, at the next uh, In Your House, whatever they call it, which they have not announced, but it's June 4th. They don't bother to tell you that on television. Uh, It will be Cameron Grimes defending the title against uh, Carmelo Hayes. And Grimes has vowed if he wins, Solo Sokoa will get the next shot. So that's your lineup. Then we had a, a, uh, I would actually call this a mini movie. With uh, Santos Escobar on the phone with Tony D'Angelo. And they're trying to negotiate the freedom of their respective partners. Uh, one of whom can no longer walk again, apparently. And the other, he may have been uh, you know, put through a wood chipper. We don't know. But here's what I'm going to say about this. And I, I hesitate. horribly acted. I hesitate. <laughs> no, I thought it was actually pretty good. Oh, and, I, and I hesitate to say this because uh, I don't want to get, you know, this is a weird company, okay? I'm pretty sure that Jeremy Borash shot and produced all of these vignettes. I don't know for sure, but like, you know, I'm pretty sure. And I don't want to, I, I hesitate to put him over because I don't want him to get fired. But like, the production of these skits, whatever you want to say about the acting or whatever, but like, the production of these mini movies. It's like miles, miles above anything you'll get on Raw or SmackDown on the main roster. And like in a normal company, he'd be like called up to the main roster to do this stuff there. But this is WWE, so you know if he, I don't want to put him over too much because they may just fire him. But anyway, the production was very, very good. And I thought everybody played their roles well. I thought this was well done. I don't know what's going on, but I thought it was well done. Apparently they're going to do like a switch or something. We had this poor Nathan Frazier, this bloke. Oh, my Lord. He's such a geek. His character is such a geek. And uh, he's interrupted by Zion Quinn, who is a total jerk. And uh, they're going to have a match. It's, I think it's going to be him and Zion Quinn and Wes Lee first. And then, uh, and then you know, Nathan Frazier next. They might, for all I know, be putting Wes Lee and Nathan Frazier together as the new MSK. They should. Which Nathan Frazier's so wacky that it actually, I think, would work. Yes. So I think this would be a good pairing. And look, we know Wes can cut a promo. Right now, Frazier can't, you know, at least believably come across. But he can move. That's one thing he can do. And those guys together, it would be fun. And they need teams anyway. It would be the best thing for them both, I think, right now. Then we had Sarai and Andre Chase versus Tiffany Stratton and Grayson Waller in a mixed tag. Dude, the fans were super into this match. And it was a fun match. And the best character in all of NXT 2.0 by Miles is Bodie Hayward. (laughs) This guy's awesome. And he's got a great NXT name. And they had a fun match. And uh, Stratton... You're burying the lead of him coming out for the the, the whole deal. Well, we'll get to that after a while. It's going to take a while. (laughs) I want to finish this review. But anyway, uh, Sarai rolled up Stratton and got the win, and uh, they called it an upset, even though I think Stratton's had four matches in her entire career, and the fans went crazy for the finish, and this was this was a fun segment. Ikamanjiro is back, and he attacked uh, Von Wagner, so they're going to continue that storyline. Toxic Attraction played Mean Girls to poor Indy Hartwell. They can't say what happened other than her man is gone, and then, of course... 
You know, they're talking about, oh, my man would never leave me. I only leave my men. And they call her a nerd and leave and everything like that. Nikita Lyons beat Ariana Grace in three minutes. And now Nikita Lyons will move on to face Fallon Henley in the next round. And that was that. Then the main event was Natty and Cora Jade. So here's the whole feud. Cora Jade and Natty do a promo. Cora J is fawning all over her. She's the biggest mark for Natty. Natty puts over the locker room and everybody, and then she attacks and beats up Cora J because she's a heel. This leads to Natty doing a couple of matches in NXT, and then out of the blue on social media, they announce, hey, we're doing Natty and Cora J this week. They do the match. It's a good match. And then uh, Natty beats her with the sharpshooter. And then when the match is over... Natty turns babyface and hugs her again, and I think she's out of here. So Cora Jade never even got a win over Natty. Although I will say, Lade was a good match. Cora Jade is better after the match. I don't think it's the end of the world that Natty beat her in a really good match. Certainly, Cora Jade did not come out of this looking like a geek. So that's like an improvement. And uh, that was the end of the show. So as far as NXT 2.0 goes, a much better show than usual. Rob Bartlett is the man He tried the best he can Vince on the new What Rob Bartlett's gonna do to you Vinny B, Happy Corbin, and Bartlett in a three-way Oh Here comes the commentator Rob Bartlett, he's a great imitator of Vince McMahon Rob, you're the love of my life Come back to Monday Night Raw and be my wife. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. Is this Rob Bartlett? Guilty as ch- Hey! Oh, look who's here on the show, everybody. There's a star here. Rob, hey, Rob Bartlett is joining us here today. How you doing, Rob? I don't know what to say about this. To actually be proposed to in song was a beautiful thing. <laughs> I couldn't really do much of an impression of him other than the the tone of the voice, you know. He still got it. <laughs> he still got it. I think I had the wrong guy. Well, what, what did you learn about the the Rob Bartlett that you you uh, you checked out? He was an explorer way back when. That's not him. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. He was born August 15th, 1875, and so, died and you, April 28th, 1946. He died in, okay, so, but you thought he might be on the show this week. Well, I couldn't figure out why you guys picked him. Here you go to the Brian and Vinnie Matt Cleary Memorial Hall of Awesome. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Hey. Aye, 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 aye. Well, there he goes. Very aye. prestigious. You get nothing. You've warmed the cockles of my heart. I have warm cockles now. And um, lucky fella. I'm uh, I'm I'm moist. I'll just say that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm moist. If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.